So let's talk about this Supreme Court decision. It is being covered as uh, a as a rejection of affirmative action. And it is uh, a rejection of affirmative action that was punishing whites and Asians. But it is a rejection of it that is only at the surface level. So I'm not satisfied by the Supreme Court decision. I don't think it's going to have the practical effect of abolishing race-based admission. I think the process will still be existent, but it will all have to be unofficial and it will have to be through the teams of uh, subjective evaluators. Now, from within this more subjective system, uh, there might be a way, a way to parasitize the newly unofficial nature of uh, race-based admission. In that, you're going to have people probably faking that they're black. Now, there's going to be a system to detect these people, but... You know, if I write an essay that says, I was challenged a lot for my race. If the guy who reviews this doesn't know that I'm white, doesn't know that I'm black, I may create an impression that leads me to be recruited as a black person under a more subjective system. Whereas under an objective system that says, if you're black, you just get admitted no matter but like no matter your degree of intelligence and performance, in that system, there was very little chance to parasitize and to try to, to Elizabeth Warren your way through, you know? Uh, I, I predict the rise of the Elizabeth Warren, uh, the rise of the person who identifies as a descendant of the Native Americans, uh, without any genetic proof. I think it may be one of the effects of this judgment. Now, it's a shy judgment. Uh, it's a shy judgment that fails at talking about the issue of anti-whiteism, anti-Asianism. They, they stay really within the frame of the Martin Luther K, you know, uh, this whole, well... Uh, we need to protect everyone equally. Now, uh, they do know that it's about Asians and whites because eventually they talk about white and Asian applicants. But it's not a strong statement against anti-whiteism across America. And they leave so many outs. They say basically there were multiple problems with the current system. These problems involved that they were negatively punishing you know, the other side. They were negatively punishing those who were not uh, admitted because they, their place was taken by a black person. Now, how do you want... And they say, if you were to fix this, you could continue race-based admission. This is where I'm scared. Because how, how can you set the entry to university to not be a zero-sum game? I'm afraid that there will be bureaucratic detours around this. I'm afraid that, okay, well, we're just going to open up a couple of student positions and we're going to call these student positions extra students. And we're going to say, all right, we're taking that many extra students and we really, really like black people as extra students. Now, if you've done this, You've made, it, you've made a bureaucratic detour that makes it look like you taking people from the extra category is not depriving the main entry people in any way. You, you've made the illusion of a non-zero-sum game. And I'm afraid that this is what one of the ways in which uh, universities will continue uh, just fitting their current practices to this Supreme Court decision. There's not much that's binding on there. Uh, they talk about other factors, uh, the, the lack of objective measure. So one of the claims of the universities was, well, the reason we are entitled to choose by race is that having racial diversity in our universities changes the learning experience. It creates a different learning environment. And this is the kind of learning environment we want to push. This is the kind of, this is the service we're offering. It's to be educated in a high diversity university. 
Uh, that argument was kind of a long shot. Uh, the, the Supreme Court's answer on this one is, well, you, you don't give us any objective measure. What, what is this diversity that you are benefiting from? Is, is the fact that there's more blacks in your, in your university leading to hip-hop uh, sessions impromptu uh, rap freestyle battles? What is it? What is it that you measure as a gain from the mere fact of diversity in the educational experience? And finally, there was another factor that uh, the universities were uh, arguing and that the, the Supreme Court said the other problem with your race admission policies is that your race admission policy necessarily implies stereotyping. So the fact that you think you need uh, black people to fulfill some task in, in, the, the, in the kind of diversity of the educational experience you offer means that you have a certain view of black people. It means that you're stereotyping black people. If you're saying we need more of that, that's also saying that on average you expect something from black people that you don't expect from white people and Asians. And as such, your race-based admission, therefore, is racist, is stereotypical. It is making a claim of averages. Now, that is the kind of ultimate uh, three-prong reasons why these race-based admissions were denied. But again, I'm afraid there will be tricks. Look at what just Harvard University answered. That's from uh, Christopher Cantwell's uh, Telegram channel, Dear members of the Harvard community, today the Supreme Court delivered its decision. The court held that Harvard College's admission system does not comply with the principles of the Equal Protection Clause. The court also ruled that colleges and universities may consider in admissions decisions an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise, we will certainly comply with the court's decision. Can you believe this, aggress this passive-aggressive kind of LGBT shunning? Uh-uh. We're absolutely going to be respecting your court decision. <laughs> and it's like, oh, yeah. So they want to make the race essay be the most important thing like like okay okay you can have iq and grades and okay but do you have a good race essay <laughs> and they're gonna make the race essay count for the most point and it, it's like it's it's going to be at the point where you can literally be retarded but if you have a good race essay uh, we're, we're getting you in now. It's ridiculous. They're gonna tr they're gonna try to find all sorts of detours. My prediction somehow is that these detours will not be as biased as the official policy has been in the last few years. So somehow it's a victory. What's what's been happening? Uh, it's a victory, but it's a small one. It's a small step in the right direction. Because I think they're going to have a hard time just, you know, being in awe in front of every race essay and having their people, yeah, yeah, you have to overestimate the race essay. Didn't you see it's a black guy? It's going to get hard and it's going to get onto people's conscience. And eventually the bureaucrats, you know, they, they don't really have principles, but they they have kind of an emotional rejection to to explicitly be biased, you know, to be honest with themselves. So I think that there, there will be some acts of honesty. There will be some, uh, you know what, I'm not scoring this race essay uh, 15 out of 10 this time. Uh, and through this honesty, there might be a progression for more justice for whites and Asians. But don't think that this is... Uh, the end all be all, uh, we are very far from eliminating anti-whiteism in America.
Uh, this is not a normal court. Biden slams colorblind Scotus decision to end affirmative action. The court has effectively ended affirmative action in college admissions. The president raged, and I strongly disagree with the court's decision. Of course, of course. And uh, JFK Jr. Uh, was getting in trouble for it. And, and this totally, it totally bars JFK Jr. Uh, no, not JFK Jr., Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, totally bars him to me as a credible man. You know, my position has never been for him. I've always seen him as a clown and uh but a clown that was better than the alternative clowns in that he would be kind of anti system but at this point reading this i think i just consider this guy just an ideological opponent at this moment he says regarding the supreme court banning affirmative action in higher education i know many americans feel that purely race based decisions are unfair However, this feeling misses important context. The effects of racist policies going back centuries are now self-perpetuating. So he's making the whole discourse of, oh, well, the perpetuation of ancient oppression is still hurting people. We have to fix it by creating today's injustice. Affirmative action understands this and uses race-based policies to undo the effects of racist policies. Colorblind admissions tend to favor those who are already in the circle of privilege. It favors those who grew in affluent, educated households. Wouldn't you like to invite in those who have been left out in the cold? No, we wouldn't like it because this is a Marxist misinterpreted way of how people reach uh, how people reach success in life. It is not through privilege, it is through birth given privilege. It is not because they were part of the right condition and circumstances. It is because they have a quality that's capable of ingesting whatever amount of knowledge we're trying to have them ingest through their educational route. In other words, people are either good for university or they're bad. And it's better we tell them that they're too bad for it uh, right from the start rather than entertain. Entertain a false meritocracy to deceive them into success. So overall, my conclusion on the Supreme Court decision, a good decision in the right direction, but we're going to need much more decisiveness, much more principled stance, much more pursuit of uh, justice. If we are in a nation that promises equal protection, then it shouldn't be that this equal protection is always given on one side, but always denied to the other.